Um, after reviewing the tape, uh, really uh, excited. Great. Anytime you get a, a SEC win, it's a, it's, it's a good thing. But just watching the tape, I think it was just the, uh, the obvious, really pleased with our balance offensively. Thought that really, really helped. And then defensively, I really liked our energy. You know, seven sacks. They got some turnovers. Just, just really pleased with that. Uh, Injury-wise, offensively had a little bumps and bruises, but nothing. Um, I think everybody will be back. Defensively, Jerry and Street, um, he, he's in the concussion protocol. I think he'll be fine. But uh, he will probably miss Tuesday's practice. Uh, Vic Evans and Kadir Shepard are going to have surgery this week and be out. So uh, uh, Gary Wunderlich will – We'll find out how he kicks. Was was very impressed with Luke Logan. He you know he was 100 percent, so he stepped in there good. Uh, if Gary does come back, he'll be our kicker. Uh, I think Luke's Luke's going to be the future. But you know if Gary comes back, he's just been in those pressure situations before. So, but we'll see where he is uh, later on in the week. Uh, LSU, a lot of respect for Coach Orgeron. Worked for him for a year. Uh, I was his recruiting coordinator. Obviously, very very uh, energetic guy. Learned a lot. Learned a lot from him. Been very impressed. How he's uh, you know rallied his his team, uh, very impressive. Their last two wins on third down, Auburn was three of fourteen, and Florida was two of nine. So they've done a good job getting off the field defensively. And that, that that's kind of been the difference in their wins. And then offense, they give you a lot of schematic problems with their shifts and their motions, trying to out leverage you and outflank you. They got good players, so definitely going to be a you know exciting uh, atmosphere in Vault Hemingway on Saturday. And we really um, you know that home field advantage was huge for us. Uh, this Saturday, I mean, we are our, our players feed off our crowd and excited to, to have another home SEC game. All right, raise your hand if you have a question. We'll bring the microphone to you. Who wants to go first? Left or right? Matt, you said last week was a swing game for you guys. What does that make this week? I uh, mean, again, it's it's the next game, and it's an SEC game. It's against LSU, uh, and it's it's just a, it's a big game because it's the next game, and uh, I think. I think our, our challenge is to carry on the momentum of our last six quarters into the next game. Uh, but the, the challenge after a win is not let a win mask some of the mistakes you made. Continue to get better week in, week out. Don't think everything is the way it needs to be. There's still a lot of improvements we need to make offensively and defensively. And I think that's important is not let a win mask those things to continue to get better. I think the teams that finish strong down the stretch are the teams that continue to improve. And I think uh, we need to be one game better next week. And I think that's what it means. Matt, you guys did well for a number of plays in the run game. Defensively, it looks like. But there were several explosive plays uh, again. Is it still about fits and uh, and that sort of thing, or, or how can you limit those? And that, that's kind of what I was alluding to. Don't let a win mask those little things. And I think that's what we have to continue because it was a it was a poor fit. It wasn't necessarily getting beat physically. It's just fitting the right spots consistently. And I think that's the challenge um, for a young team or for an inexperienced team is to be consistent. Because I think you saw us do it right more, and that's where you get a win. I don't think you're ever going to be perfect. But I think the more you can do things the right way, the more offensively we can get the ball to the right spot and get it out of our hand, the more defensively we can have the guys in the right spot and the right gap, the more we'll be successful. And I think we just got to keep coming. We were one game better. And now next week we got to be another game better and, uh, and then continue to play with the energy. Because what happens is if you play with energy and people, people run to the ball, you can overcome some mistakes. And I think that, that that's huge. Coach, what's going on with uh, Markel Pack? Just, uh, you know, he's got a, he's got a knee injury. And uh, pregame of Auburn, he kind of tweaked it. He just didn't feel right. And he just hasn't felt right. And he's got a, he's got a, just an ongoing knee injury. And I think it's kind of week to week. And I'm, I'm hoping he can give us some snaps, you know, this season. Because he, he has some experience. He's played in big games. And I'm just, I'm just hoping that uh, his knee will come around. Uh, but it's kind of week to week how he feels. It's not uh, – I don't think there's a surgery we can have to get it fixed. It's just it's just week to week. Coach, uh, we saw a big improvement with the offensive line starting with the Auburn game. What caused that? Communications? We're not seeing free guys run in it anymore. I, you know, I just think it's the balance. I think it's the, the ability to, to run the ball and, and keep a defense off balance because it, it doesn't really matter, you know, who you're playing. Defenses are good enough where if you're one-dimensional, they can – they can take that away. So I just think the balance and the being able to run the football, keep the defense on their heels a little bit, 
uh, you know, let the offensive line attack some where they're not always backing up. I think that really helps the O-line. But, and they've played better. They, 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 they've accepted the challenge and they've played better. And uh, the last two games have been their best two. I thought they took a step against Auburn, and I think they took another step against, uh, against Vanderbilt, and they need to continue to improve because when they play well, um, you know, Shea feels more comfortable and we get our run game going. That opens up some stuff in the pass game. So, well, you know, just for them to keep building on and just keep taking the next step is, is big. You said in the post game, some of us old timers really point out the LSU yeah, game. Your, your dad, myself, <laughs> you know, I, don't, I, I fall in that category, yeah. but uh, this is big for us, as you know, and big for you. But defensively, Lots of turnovers, sacks. Marquise Haynes kind of came out of the shadows, and all of a sudden, his best game by far. Any little, anything's happened there that uh, he came up alive. You know, I, I think maybe he was pressing, and, um, and just trying to make every play instead of letting the game come to him. And I think, um, you know, they they kind we just kind of talk, sat down, talked to him, and you know, I think he wasn't having fun. He was wanting to make all these plays, and I think. It, he looked like he was having fun Saturday. He was smiling. He was just he was he just cut it loose and played played within the scheme, and uh, just really good to see see him back out there having fun playing football. And and I just think the overall energy, the home field crowd. I mean everything was just you had a different feel to it. And I think he was a big reason for that. Without giving away a game plan or anything, you've thought about maybe going to a five band front against a running team like LSU. You know, I think you got to do whatever you can do to slow down those guys, but they present so many problems with the shifts and the motions and the speed sweeps. So they, they attack you on the perimeter. You know, if you kind of load everybody in the box, I mean, they get on the perimeter with those speed sweeps and they, they present some challenges. So I think it'll, it'll, it'll be big for us to have a sound, solid uh, game plan. We're not doing a whole bunch of moving around because, they, you know, they, they do so much motion and shifting that they, you know, they give you some issues. Coach Luke, uh, since uh, LSU lost to Troy, they've had two huge wins against uh, Florida and Auburn. But what has impressed you the most about them overall as a team? Well, I, I just I think uh, you know any time that you know somebody gets written off and you can bounce back, I think that's really really special. That's a tribute to to Coach Orgeron for him to rally his team. And the biggest the the glaring thing that stands out to me is just their third down production on defense. You know, getting getting people off the field. You know, Auburn. Three of fourteen, Florida two of nine. That's a recipe for winning football games, and uh, just been very, very impressed with with how they've rallied. I mean, to go on the road and get a win, you know, you know, at Florida, and they come and beat a top ten team. I mean, they they obviously have things going in the right direction. So I'm, uh, we got our work cut out for us. Well, what are your impressions of the season Darius Geis has had? What do you think makes him hard to tackle? I, I just think he's a good back. I mean, we've seen him before. I mean, he's, he is a very, very talented back. And, you know, they attack you outside on the perimeter of these speed sweeps, so your safeties have to be there. And your linebackers have to see all the eye candy. Then you have a, a talented back like him and, and a physical offensive line. So I just think their, their scheme and the way they attack you is tough. And then he, he's obviously a, a great back. So I think um, – you know, we, we're going to have to do a great job of trying to tackle him because, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, he, he's going to win that matchup a, an awful lot. So we're going to have to get a bunch of people to the ball. Besides guys, obviously, who are the some of the players in the LF, LSU offense that you're looking to key in on? Well, you know, I think I think the big one is you got you got to stop guys. I mean, that that that's first. But, they, you know, they, they do a good job with their speed sweep motions to different people. You know, the, the, the chalk guy, he, he returned a punt for a touchdown. So, obviously, you got to stop him. They'll get him in some one-on-one -on -one matchups. So, if you just load the box up, they're going to hurt you with the speed sweeps. And they got some guys that can beat you on the perimeter. So, I just think – but the big focus is going to be on stopping guys. I mean, I mean that's the guy you got to take out of the game and try to make them one-dimensional. That, that'll be huge for us. Matt, you, at one time in the game Saturday, you had either 10 or 12 defensive linemen in that front four you played. So who are some of the backups that you feel comfortable putting in any time? You know, I, I was very impressed with Austrian. Austrian's really come on and played really well. I like his effort and his energy. He's been good. Um, you know, Ross Donnelly showed up a couple times inside and, and, and did some good things. 
uh, you know, I, I've been, been been impressed with those guys because, you know, Josiah and Breland and, and those guys, you kind of know what they're going to give you. And uh, But to see those guys give us some reps because it was hot Saturday. So any time you can play those guys and, and rest the other guys, I think that's good. But I've been very impressed with, with Austrian and Ross. I think they gave us some quality snaps in the SEC game. That, that, that's a big improvement for us.